Cheers, guys. Epix 911, welcome to the Elitist Geek VR news for Monday, December 12th, 2016. Let's jump right into VR, guys. Start with some preamble. Let's talk about my old pal, Murphy, and uh, him rearing his head. You know, anytime ego gets a bit swollen, you know, you get a little cocky, you start peacocking around the courtyard, Murphy lays the smack down. And, you know, some people just, no, he's not real. Murphy doesn't exist. No, he exists, guys. He really does exist. Case in frickin' point yesterday. What do I start the video with? Talking about having nailed audio quality. Yeah, it hasn't been a thing for a few months. Let's move on to bigger and better things like video, production, you know, that kind of stuff. Sure enough, Murphy says, Nay, thou art a knave. Thou art naive, and thou hast allowed thy ego to get swollen. I shall layeth the smack down. And he did. And I experienced something I've never freaking experienced before. Corruption to my master file. Basically, yeah, it was corrupt at around the 10-minute mark, which I appreciate many of you pointing out to me. Exidy being the first, uh, my buddy from Friday Night's. And I said, no, 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 don't worry about it. That's just the regular processing thing, thinking it was the thing from a few months ago. It'll work itself out. No, it didn't. And it was corruption, which I figured out after many, many exports. So I had to end up basically resorting to cutting the corruption out, which was about a six-second piece of video that was all screwed up. So a little bit of a jump cut in there. Doesn't really ruin the continuity, though, but not something I like to have. So anyways, there's Murphy, there's proof, keeping things humble. And the other thing I picked up, guys, because I've got T-2 days to my staycation, 19 days of just me, the man cave, well, my wife once in a while, but um, that right there, I picked that up. Another YouTube channel I like to watch is Barnacle's Nerdgasm. He featured this Sony camera, well, the American version. This is the Canadian one we have released the FDR AX33, which is uh, pretty good. The quality, though, holy crap, is it good compared to this supposed 1080p webcam. The 1080 on a proper camera, whether it's DSLR or the Sony one, night and freaking day. Like, I'm not a vain person at all, but it's enough to make you think, holy crap, I ate a little bit too much chocolate. You see every imperfection in your face, every pore, Every gray hair, uh, you know, in your beard, yeah, there's a huge difference. But it's damn crisp, and everything behind me is in focus. So you can clearly see the Iron Maiden posters, the arcade cab, everything else. I like it. I just got to figure out how to use it properly. That's what I'll work on during my staycation. Didn't have much luck with plugging the uh, Yeti in through the external. Uh, there was a lot of background noise. So I'm probably going to look for capture programs where I can basically use both as just capture sources and edit them that way. So fun stuff for me to tinker with on the staycation. All right, let's talk about uh, Tim Sweeney. We talked about him a week ago at an event. Uh, he's back with some more from that event talking about the cost of AAA games, the production costs. And I thought this was fitting to chat about because it kind of rides on the coattails of yesterday's story, or was it the day before, where I talked about the indie developer uh, from Eerie Bear Games and his developmental costs and not having made any profit to date. That was 50000 Well, where indie devs are now is about where the industry started. For those of us who go back 30 plus years, it was typical to have, you know, today's indie-sized teams as the norm back then for AAA titles of the day, meaning you typically had a programmer and you typically had a musician that wrote the, the music and the sound effects for the game. That was your dev team, and the costs were in the thousands of dollars. Again, like the indie teams now. Then stuff started getting ramped up. By the time I was working at Electronic Arts, this was already, you know, past the Chris Roberts Wing Commander 3. I am uh, not a game programmer. I have aspirations of Hollywood, circa that kind of time frame, where he was busting through the million and 10 million mark. Tim Sweeney goes on to say that by 2006, 
10 to 20 million for a triple a game was about the norm and fast forward to today he says it's about 100 million so literally a triple a title nowadays costs about as much as a hollywood film scary that it's gotten to that point and as an example uh, they point out in the article that Oculus funding Robo Recall, this is for Epic, uh, as Sweeney mentions this, it has a budget that is close to the budget of the entire first Gears of War game. So huge, and again, an indicator that that probably wasn't going to happen without Oculus opening up the wallet. All right, news-wise, let's talk about Storyboard VR. This is... Uh, from the company Artifact, their uh, designer, Paul Hoover, talks about it and uh, he talks about the capabilities that you're allowed to or you're able to import 2D art. Uh, designers can get straight into producing ideas that have to do with VR and you can take those 2D assets and bring them into VR as explorable spaces goes on to say if you are in the early stages of imagining a VR experience it will be the perfect tool as it doesn't require skills or 3D assets as with traditional storyboards storyboard VR is about mapping out the story and figuring out early what will work and what won't work and he ends with a tool such as storyboard VR could be instrumental in setting a standard for some types of VR content and give plenty of people that don't have a lot of VR experience, the chance to tell their stories. And that's going to be available in early 2017. You can sign up on Artifact's website if you want more information or want to be in on the early beta releases. But those are the types of things when we talk about developmental budgets for indie teams, AAA teams, storyboarding is something that absolutely can streamline and make the whole development process more efficient. So a tool like Storyboard VR likewise can assist a smaller indie dev team or hell, even a AAA team in managing their developmental costs, keeping the budget down for the storyboarding. So very cool. Next news piece, the VR metaverse company High Fidelity raises 22 million in new funding. Now, talked about these guys in the past from High Fidelity. Uh, they'd raised 17 and a half million now it's come out that in an additional round of venture capital funding, 22 million additional. That's according to the Wall Street Journal. Their CEO, Philip Rosedale, uh, he was a founder and former head of Linden Lab, the company behind Second Life. I've talked about them. They really aren't a game so much as an online experience. Literally a Second Life, thus the name. So he left Linden Labs a few years ago to form High Fidelity uh, in order to harness the oncoming wave of immersive VR using experience he gleaned with Second Life. And yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how the experience of a Second Life plays out in virtual reality. It's incredibly flexible, even though I've never played it, I've read a lot about it and what I read sounds good. I just never seem to be able to get around to actually trying it. But very cool. All right, next up, some discounts. $100 in free VR games when you buy the appropriate NVIDIA GPU and an HTC Vive. So if you uh, purchase either the 1060, 1070, or 1080, those are the, uh, the newer GPUs from NVIDIA, that gets you raw data, Sports Bar VR and Sirius Sam VR, The Last Hope. Now, they say that represents a value of about $99.97. Now, I report that as news for those of you who, you know, like those titles or, you know, want to experience those titles. For me personally, Raw Data is the only one there that I would consider purchasing. You could probably pick that up on a Steam sale. So, I wouldn't personally put the value at 100 bucks, but again, that's what they're reporting in the news, just giving you my two bits, which is I would put it considerably less, but a discount is a discount, and I report it. And if you want to take advantage of the deal, but you're starting from a, 
you know, point of literally scratch. Uh, the bundle also includes a number of pre-built desktops and laptops packing those. So if you're really starting from scratch, get the video or get the gaming machine that has the appropriate card to benefit from the discount is another possibility. Uh, the offer starts today, goes until the 31st of January 2017. There's another deal that involves getting Arizona Sunshine, which is fast moved into my top five VR games of all time, and a pre-order for Star Trek Bridge Crew, which is coming up within a month to two months, uh, if you purchase an HTC Vive with a qualifying Intel i7 processor. And last but not least, uh, if you're interested in getting an Oculus Rift headset on Amazon, you will receive a $100 Amazon gift card to put towards anything. And the authors of this article on Upload VR point out that should be the Oculus Touch controllers. I concur definitely where you should put that $100. All right, next news story, Nikon or Nikon, the camera company turns their attention towards 360 degree video with their new Key Mission 360 action camera. Think of this as kind of like a Gear 360 GoPro. Uh, it's in that class of cameras. It's $496.95 US, let's just say 500 bucks. So it's slightly more expensive than the Gear 360 solution, but it bills itself as an action camera that you can easily mount to things like mountain bike helmets, motorcycle helmets, uh, to be able to literally film action sequences. So very cool. Check that out. I've included the link below per normal. And then next up, Chris Hardwick, who is, uh, you know, long known in gaming, Dungeons and Dragons and all kinds of other areas. He feels that VR addiction is going to be a problem. Now, it's no secret that gaming releases dopamine. And dopamine is the pleasure drug that the human body makes. And it feels good. <laughs> and we definitely all experience it when we do something we enjoy, whether it's food, eating, traveling, in varying amounts. The body's pretty good at releasing just the amount that you need. Now, stuff that's really addictive, like gambling or MMOs can really get the dopamine drip in your brain going and make stuff like addictions that much tougher. It's also why drugs that are opiate-based are so damn addictive because they overload those pleasure sensors, stop us from being able to make our own dopamine and rely on that chemical, and they feel about a billion times better. So, yeah. That's where he's going with this, and he says, ever since the movie Lawnmower Man, we've been promised that there would be this virtual wonderscape that we could exist in. I do think there are dangers to it because the world is a dirty place, and VR can be engineered to be everything we want it to be. Why would you ever leave that if you're just constantly being stimulated in the most pleasurable way possible? And I can agree with that absolutely to a point. Would it be enough in its current state for some people to get that addicted to it? Absolutely. Um, I think for most of us, it's probably not going to be an issue. Is it going to get to a point where it's that much more addicting? Undoubtedly. <laughs> Undoubtedly, it will. Um, is it still going to be within most humans' capacity to, you know, uh, resist that just like the majority of people don't become gambling addicts or smoking addicts, etc., right? Um, again, that's why things like opiates are so addicting because it's one of those that when you do try it, you can be really strong. It's that hard to resist. Is VR going to get to the point of being like an opiate? Uh, hard to say. And I guess we're going to find out together as it evolves as we start seeing and experiencing new features and as the immersion gets more and more powerful. It'll be a neat social experiment to say the least to find out as we move forward. Possibly scary, but I'm one of those guys until we cross that bridge, you know, doing what we can to avoid disaster, obviously. But um, let's worry about it when it becomes something tangible to worry about. 
is what I mean. Next up, Oculus launches developer preview of its web VR browser, Carmel on Gear VR. Now, right now, it doesn't even have the address bar working properly, but it's available, as is the starter kit for download or viewable uh, if you've got a compatible browser. And, you know, according to their blog, they're going to be or already are in partnership with Google, Microsoft, and Mozilla. So Firefox, Chrome, Internet Explorer, all tools that are compatible. Uh, yeah, that should be interesting. Should be interesting. Uh, but I think a little bit premature. I'd like to see the address bar working before I personally start monkeying around. All right, guys, that is it for news today. As always, cheers and definitely catch you on the VR flip side.